On this call, we're going to be talking about how to run an uh, effective initial discovery interview. Now, after uh, I brought up the topic of discovery, I wanted to get more clarity on it because discovery, there's different ways of doing discovery. On this call, what we're going to be discussing and going through is that very first call that you have with a client. Uh, when you're trying to find out the scope of the project and as, just understand the client, understand their budget, and being able to give them an accurate quote and make them a good proposal. So you might be asking, oh, went a little too fast. So you might be asking yourself, what is a discovery and why do I need to do it? And I'm gonna be straight up with everyone. For my first two years freelancing, I didn't even, I've never even heard discovery. I never even heard of it. And it is a regular industry, uh, uh, term that's used, but I didn't know about it. And my idea of the way that I found out about a project with, with the client was usually I just sent them a list of questions like, what colors do you like? What kind of font do you like? What kind of website do you like? And that's all I knew how to do for my first couple years until I learned about what discovery was. And discovery is where you can learn as much as possible about the client, their business, their brand, their goals for their project, and the current problems and challenges that they have and that they need to get solved. It's also uh, you know, a proper one. It'll help you get a clear understanding of the project scope and budget. And this way you'll be able to give a better quote and build a more detailed proposal. So first off, let's talk about what happens when you don't do a good first discovery interview. Um, and this, this is how my first couple years were freelancing because I never did this. I never really ran a proper uh, first initial meeting with the client. Uh, the first one was leaving up open all this room for scope creep. My first two, two three years, I don't even think I remember a project that I had where there was no scope creep. Some of them had a little bit of scope creep, but some of them just dragged on and on and on. And, and I couldn't stop it. Like it just opened up the floodgates. And once you open up those gates to scope creep, it's really hard to close them. Another one is not catching all the red flags. Uh, you know, Sometimes you need to like really talk to a client to see if there's somebody you want to work with. If you have more of an in-depth conversation with them first, you might see those things that says, oh, maybe I should not take this project. This project might be a headache. It might be a stressor. It, I might lose money. It might not be a good fit. And one thing you want to keep in mind in the very beginning is it has to work both ways. Uh, you should be able to find out how to, you should be able to see, is this a good fit for both of us? Uh, it's got to be more of a partnership. Uh, the other one is not getting a clear understanding and direction of the goals. Uh, and that is, you're just kind of like building and you don't know what you're building it for. And then this is a big one for me. And this is one that, that has, made me pivot and break away from just trying to close a deal really quick with a client. And that is you could turn into an order taker. And see, the thing is when you're not really talking about the goals, finding out who the client is and why do they want to build this and not really getting to the root of it, you're just doing what the client tells you to do. And when you're just doing what the client tells you to do, you're going to be you're gonna be treated and put as the order taker. And one thing about being an order taker is you're easily replaceable because there are, there's, there's an unlimited resource of order takers out there. And, and it's hard to break out of this. And the thing is too, it's, it's hard to break out of this because you, you, it's hard to change the client's perspective of you and the way they look at you. And also it's hard to, break out of it if you're coming from uh, a different background. Like for myself, I came from a background where I had a regular job. I wasn't an entrepreneur, I wasn't a freelancer. I had a regular job. And in my job, I had certain duties I had to take and I had a boss I had to answer to and I had to do what I was told to do. 
So that kind of mentality, uh, it was hard to break out of it. The whole point of this, you know, of this call right here, and, and well, one big point of it is to break out of that mentality of being an order taker and start looking at it as more of a partnership with the client. How can you help them achieve their goals? And then there's a good chance a project will fail. The thing is there has to be direction and a goal. And there has to be a clear understanding of the problems. What problems is this supposed to solve? The client might think they know, and they know there's a problem because they feel it. And they feel it might be coming from one end, but the client is also doing a lot of guessing. They might be guessing that this will fix a problem, but they're not sure about it. And if you don't know what the problems are, if you don't know what the goal is, then how can you address it? How can you, you know, tell the client, uh, do you know what? I think it's a good idea what you want, but we're trying to fix this right here. If we do this, it'll fix a problem that we need to fix and it'll help you more. See, but if you don't know what those problems are, you know, you won't be able to address them. You'll just be taking orders. And then the most, th this is the most important communication. It, communication is the key to the whole thing. And you need to have good communication with your client. And if you start it off poorly, it, it's gonna be hard throughout the whole project. But if you get a good start on communication, you position yourself in the very beginning as uh, somebody that's there to help them achieve their goals and solve their problems and that you build that relationship from the very beginning, then you start off with strong communication. So this right here, I had a, I had a discovery call with the client uh, this week and I asked the client a question and that's what sparked this whole like, do I think this would be a great topic for us to discuss. Um, and the, this is what the client told me. It was like a total mind blowing like feedback that I got from the client. I asked her, why did the last developer fail? And this is exactly what she told me. She said he did exactly what we told him to do. He did not use his expertise and judgment to tell us what was best to do. And this, this just, this just, uh, I mean, it was great to hear a client realize this, but I mean, this just shows what they really need and what clients are really hoping for. It's more than just taking the orders and more than just doing what they tell you to do. It's how can you use, how can you help them? So what will you get out of a discovery interview? So this is what you could expect to get out of them. This is what I've gotten out of mine. Since I've switched from just doing my emails with a list of questions, uh, from just asking, you know, the basics to a client. And since I started uh, doing more structured initial consultations, initial discovery interviews, this is how it's benefited me right here and how it'll benefit you as well. Uh, you'll be able to position yourself as more than a designer and developer. You could be seen as somebody that could do more from the very beginning. I don't know if you've ever had this to happen to you. It's happened to me many times where I'd be hired to develop something, but then the client would also hire somebody else for design. They would hire somebody else for market for SEO or marketing. They would hire somebody else for branding. They would hire someone else for consultation. And I feel like, wait, we got people that can help with that. Like I could be helping you with that but they don't see me as anything else but the developer because I did not start off the relationship as somebody that's more than just a developer. When we're creatives and we're designers and we're developers, we're problem solvers. That is the, that's the essential skill behind design. Design isn't about making things look good. Design is about how can you solve a problem? you'll be able to build trust a lot easier from the beginning. And building trust is a hard thing to do and something that must get done. Uh, when you start off your conversations, your relationship with the client, and you're showing from the very beginning, you're more interested in their goals and helping them out with their business instead of just how can I build a five-page website for you, you're, you're going to be trusted more because the clients are going to have more like, they're going to feel you care more possibly than the other developers that they've worked with. 
uh, you'll have a better chance of winning the project. Your approach, you will approach the project from a different perspective as well. Uh, you'll be focusing more on the client's goals and problems that need to be solved from the very beginning. So you're going to look at things differently. If you start off by looking at their goals and at their problems and how you could help them, you're going to like the whole way you view the project, the whole way you view your conversations, requests from the clients, all that stuff is going to be different because you're going to have a different aim. You're going to have a different goal and your goal is going to be focused on their goals. And it's not just going to be about building the website or making the design and you'll be adding more value to the project. And when you add more value, uh, your rates are higher. You should be able to charge more because you are worth more at that point. And there will be a clear expectations of, there will be a clear understanding of expectations from both of you. From the very beginning, it'll be clear. You guys will know exactly what to expect from each other. And this will prevent scope creep. And I have to say that I could not control scope creep for the first few years. But since I started opening up this kind of conversation, this kind of a communication, I have eliminated just about all scope creep out of my workflow. I've gotten very good at preventing scope creep from happening because I address it in the very beginning. A lot of times I found when I'm frustrated with a client because they're asking for too much, because they're going after revision after revision, it's not the client's fault. It really isn't. If you have a client that's doing scope creep on you, 95% of the time, it's not the client's fault. It's ours. We need to build that communication and it comes from communication. If communication is clear from the very beginning on this is exactly what we're going to do. Now, if we're going to do something else, this is how it's going to go. This is how much it's going to be. And everything is laid out and you have that, you have that, uh, you have that uh, response from the client, like, okay, they understand it then it makes it so much easier when scope creep does start to happen. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Like if somebody wants to go out of scope, I'm totally fine with it. It's just, you got to pay for it. And this is how we're going to do it. And they're going to understand it because we already had that conversation from the very beginning. All right. So right now let's go ahead and, uh, and take a pause. I want to open it up. I want to give people a chance to ask questions and also a chance to, uh, give feedback and uh, also got to put it out there. Uh, let me stop the screen share. You know, I feel that a few of you right now inside the group and so on this call also has a lot of experience with uh, discovery as well. So it'd be good to hear from you guys, you know, like what discovery does with you and what are your processes uh, when you're uh, taking those first initial calls? I want to ask Jeff is, uh, I have a problem about content uh, because usually the project will be much longer because the client did, uh, doesn't provide enough content. They give content a little, a little and a little. So do you uh, talk about uh, content in the discovery, uh, uh, discovery meeting? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We make it clear the process of delivering content or paying for it. And we give options. How, how, how do you do that? Well, I first find out what they're looking for. Like I find out if, you know, if they need help with content, they need help with other services like that. So I find out about it. And then I also make it clear that, you know, content is a responsibility. But if they need help with it, we could help out. And I also tell them, I'm like, and I'm open. I tell them, I'm like, look at one of the biggest headaches clients have is getting content. And I tell them, I'm like, if you want us to help out with that, like we have content writers that could help you. So it will make the, the, the project fee is bigger. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> I mean, well, tell, me um, tell me something would you if, if like you have a major headache that's stressing you out that's holding you back in your business 
would you rather pay 500 or a thousand dollars to save you a couple weeks of a headache so that way you could get more business done and yeah that's what you gotta like really you know like look at the clients will pay that if it'll help them out okay thanks uh, we still have i want to add something if it's all right you know um on what clement asked somebody was speaking i'm sorry to interrupt go ahead rajav and then uh pass it on to lauren okay um so um clement this is a personal coming from a personal experience so i am uh, in uh, dealing with a client right now and uh, it's been a while so i was not applying the strategy before as jeff said of asking you know providing content from your own side because uh, as of now um, i'm working as a freelancer not as an agency i do have some contacts and tie-ups with uh, networking with people who can write content but at that moment i was not really offering but what i learned from this experience is sometimes content is one of the reasons why our projects get delayed and delayed and uh, i think initially we discussed in one of our initial calls that because of that let's say you start a new project and that old project is still hanging somewhere you know just because the client is not able to provide you client on time so maybe it might affect the client or not that their website is getting delayed but it sure will impact you as a freelancer or as a worker because um you have new projects coming in but the old one is still hanging in the air and you are not able to finish it off so this is what i was facing but uh, what jeff said i think it would tension to offer them that if they take the services amazing if they don't i think we should have certain guidelines to tell them that look if you will come back to us uh, this is your certain time frame we request to you to provide the content 10 days 15 days if you don't use our services and if you are not able to do that you know then probably your website will be lagging way behind because you know you are not doing anything on the website then probably you can in a way tell them that this is going to be more devastating for you because you are not providing the content and uh, for example we don't want you to come back after 6 months and say here is the content now please work because you know i forget about the project i was working mine is still the demo content so it will get back to you those project again so i feel it's better to set a clear expectation as well with the client to make them aware of their timelines when they can make us aware of our timelines i think we should keep them posted about their timelines as well because it's a two way story we are not order takers in the end right so <laughs> good stuff man good stuff lauren no exactly that um we had so many issues with content and from content scope creep because you know you might already build the page and then they get you the content and now it's not fitting and now you have to redesign it and you have to reformat it and we had a lot of projects run really late because of content alone where even kind of like what you were saying Jeff where you make the expectations early okay what content do you want we want exactly this they changed later on and that we didn't have a strong foundation to say no you can't change your mind um so what we've done recently to help protect us and to help protect them because you know you're you're trying to protect their budget too you want to protect your time and the effort that you've made but you also have to protect them and help their project not be delayed for months and years sometimes um so what we what we started doing was um one in our contracts we include either content auditing and a very specific certain amount of time so like 10 hours for content auditing or um after the project has been built they have 10 hours or 20 hours or whatever you decide to do for changes later so then you can keep track yes we can be flexible and we can change content later but you know we we got to agree on a time together um the other thing that we started doing was because the design de depends on content we don't start the project timeline until we have all the content and all the assets in our hands um and that helps when you know with them disappearing or it kind of helps them because they want the project to start right they don't they can't drag it out because it 
it's depending on them for it to start. Um, another thing is if they do disappear for 10 days, I think, or two or three weeks in our contract, we as the agency and you as a freelancer have the right to end the contract, um, which helps prevent them disappearing, trying to work on content for six months. <laughs> like you said, Raj, like you've got a life too. You've got other clients. You have to keep moving the project forward. Um, so that's, that's some things that we've done to help kind of create a guideline for them and they understand the rules and then you can work together. You know, if there's things you need to change, you can work on it. But it's like Jeff said, you got to have that foundation from the beginning. Two of the biggest headaches all freelancers, web developers, web designers go through are collecting content and scope creep. Those are the two biggest headaches. The two things that'll stop you from completing a project, hold you back from getting paid, and will keep being a constant stressor. So how do you eliminate those two from the very beginning? And it all comes down to communication. With clear communication, clear expectations, and a process and a system in place to let the clients know this is how we work and this is how it is, you can prevent that. And it is preventable. I'm, 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 I'm like, it is. I'm going to let you know that preventing scope creep and preventing delayed projects from content, collecting content is preventable. All right, cool. I'm going to go ahead and move back onto the slide. And let me get the screen share. All right, can everyone see it okay? I can't see anyone, so I have to <laughs> get out the screen share. Is yeah, that a yes? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm sorry, we already had a one time where we did the whole call and the screen share didn't show. I spent like four hours on the deck. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so going into the call now. So we already just went over like what the discovery is, the importance of it, and what you can get out of it. Now let's talk about actually going into it. Uh, there's going to be two things uh, to start with. And these are just like the two like super important things that you need to work on right here. Um, and that's going to really help out. And that's going to be preparing yourself to ask nonstop questions and to think like a psychologist or a psychiatrist, or, you know, just think of like, a TV show when you see somebody sitting on the couch and the psychologist is writing notes and like, so what made you feel that way? Why did you do that? And it's, it's kind of like that. You just want to ask lots of questions. Uh, don't jump the gun and start giving solutions and telling clients like what they think they should do. Spend the whole call asking questions. The next one is be prepared to take nonstop notes. Don't stop taking it. This right here is like needed. I even tried it on my computer typing. There's something about writing notes. And when you're writing nonstop and no matter what, even if you feel it's not significant and you're writing on it, what it's doing is it's forcing you to listen. Uh, and, and listening is the key to these discovery calls because you're trying to discover uh, the underlying stuff, the stuff the client doesn't know how to tell you yet, or the stuff the client doesn't even know is the issue. You're trying to discover it. So you have to ask a lot of questions to get to the root of that. And then you just got to take those notes. So that way you can make sure you listen. And then you always could go back to everything. So when you're preparing for it, uh, take the time, make sure you take that time to write down your questions, to structure how the meeting will go. And to remember, you're the facilitator. Uh, you're facilitating a meeting. When I do this, I want the meeting to run the way that I want it to run. If it goes any other way, and then it, it just, if it goes off track from the way that I want to run it, then I, I always leave it feeling like I didn't do it right. I feel like, you know, like I didn't get what I wanted to get out of that that interview, that, that, that call, the meeting, the discussion. So it's really important to like structure it. 
step by step from the very beginning to the end. And when I do it, I actually have like, this is the first group that we're talking about. This is the next one. I have a list of the questions and end to the end all the way through. So it's kind of like a script in a way. So these are the areas that we want to dig into. And keep in mind, this is just for the very first call while you're trying to get to learn about them and about the project. So in the first call, we just want to get to know about their business and their company. Uh, we want to get to know their brand. We want to get to know their marketing. We want to get to the, know their customers, who is their target audience. And then at the very end, I want to know about the project. And I keep the project at the very end because I first want to know about this other stuff. So that way, when we do talk about the project, I can see why are we going to need to work on this project? What does this project need to do for the client? If I start with the project first, then I start thinking, oh, we could build it this way. We could do this way. We could, you know, like I'm not looking at it from their brand, from their customers, from their goals, from their problems that need to be solved. So I talk about the project at the end of the call. And this is uh, basically, this is how I start my structure right here. I start off with an overview. In the overview, I like to set the expectations. I like the client to know about what we're doing here. Uh, I let them know that this is initial call. Um, the goal here is for us to get to know each other. Uh, we want to get a better understanding of you, of the project. We want to get to know uh, your, your goals, your challenges. We want to know who your customers are. And then we also want you to get to know us and like get an idea of our process. And this way we can find out if we're a good fit. And I even let the client know, uh, we're, we're, you know, I, I let the client know from the very beginning in, in the, in the very first part of it that, you know, I want to see if this is a good fit for us and for you that when we take on projects, we like to take them on more as a partnership. And that's why we want to know the goals. Uh, cause that's what we're here to do. Like if we take on your project, we're going to be taking on your project to help you hit your goals. We want to help you out, you know, building, a, helping your customers, uh, uh, helping you through the challenges. So right from the very beginning, I, I set the positioning, I set it up. And then another very important thing, this is super important to do in the very beginning, uh, make sure they have time in the call uh, in the expectations, tell them, you know, like usually a call like this will go for about 45 minutes to about an hour. Are you okay with that? Do you have time for this call? Find out how much time they have because you have to be respectful of their time. And, and uh, while you're going through the call, if they say they only have like, you don't want to go through the call, put all this time in and like really start getting down to the roots of it. And then for them to say like, oh, I have another call, I have another meeting I gotta go to and cut it halfway. Because it takes the full, like I said, we're only talking about the project at the very end. So we need to know how much time it's gonna take and it needs time to go through. Uh, for me, an average call for something like this, just for the very first call, this is just the first one uh, to get to know the project. It takes me about 45 minutes to an hour. And while I'm doing it, keep an eye on the time. I'm watching the time as I go through, I make sure we're not getting stuck in one section for too long. So I kind of break it down. Like I have four different sections in my call. So I'm making sure we don't spend no more than 10, 15 minutes in one section. So these are the things we want to go through. First one, the first uh, group of questions, the first, uh, uh, the first group that we talk about is about their business and company. And we want to ask about their company. When did they start? You know, how big are they? How many employees do they have? How many decision makers are there? What are their goals? What do they want to be from a year from now? And once you start getting comfortable talking this way, you can even start asking them about their sales. How much do they net in a month, in a year? How much more do they want to make next year? You know, how, how will this project help them make that? How will it help them hit their goal? And what challenges are they facing? I, this is where I want to get a gauge of their budget. I want to see how big they are and how much they could afford. I want to see how big this project should be. How important is it to them? 
you know, if they're a mom and pop shop and, you know, if they're, they're only pulling in like $5,000 a month and they're only making 60,000 a year, then, you know, of course, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to afford too much because realistically the project might not be bringing them too much, but if they're like a medium to large size company, but say they have like 15 employees, they've been around for like five to 10 years. They got 15 employees. They're most likely bringing in 1.5 million a year. And this project, you know, we can start getting a gauge of how much they're looking at. And now we know like what we should be looking at in the price range. Also, one thing to consider is uh, when given a cost and see like one of the biggest uh, uh, goals in these calls is to find out what cost to give a client, how to price them. By doing this, we're finding out their budget and how big they are. And of course, the bigger the client, the bigger the budget and the bigger expectations that they have, the more we got to charge. Because you got to understand the client thinks that this project, if they think that they want a boost of like 10% on a $20 million annual, you know, a uh, revenue that they're bringing in and they want it to be 10% and they're looking at like a $2 million increase. That's a lot on the line right there. That's a lot more, uh, even though the site might be the same size site as a smaller company, there's more that's going to be involved because now you got more responsibility. There's probably going to be a lot more uh, communication that's going to be needed. So you need to price higher. There's a lot more on the line. The next one is learning about their brand. I want to know who they are. What do they stand for? What are their values? And what matters most to them? How will they describe themselves? How do they want their project, the, their project to communicate to their customers? Uh, what makes them different from their competition? I want to know who they are. I want to know if this is somebody I want to work with that I'm in line with. Also, I want to know in their project, how are we going to present them? How, how are we, uh, uh, what kind of message do we need to get across? How do we need to position them and to put them? When it comes to the design, we need to know how to communicate them. So I want to know who they are. I want to look for all the adjectives. I want to look for every description that they give to me. Uh, the next thing is I want to know about their customers. I want, to, I want them to describe their biggest customers to me. Who are their top three? I want to know why they buy from them. Why would their customers choose someone else? What type of customers would they like, would they like to get more of? Uh, what is getting in the way? What are their customers' challenges? Uh, what can they do to improve their relationship between them and their customers? Uh, I'm trying to like get an understanding of who we're going to market to, who this project is going to be directed to, but I'm also trying to find out their problem. I'm trying to find out what challenges and problems that they're having, what needs to be solved. And then I go into their marketing. I just want to know where they're at with their marketing as well. What are their sales channels? Uh, where are their sales coming from? What is their marketing plan? Are they using Google ads? Are they using Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, SEO? Uh, what are they doing? Uh, I also want to know who is working on their marketing and how much do they have in their budget? What are they currently spending per month and per year on the marketing? And uh, this is for a couple reasons. First, I want to know, uh, is it viable hitting their goals? What do they need to get done to hit their goals? They might not have a marketing plan. They might have someone in-house doing it. They might need more help in this area. You know, they, they might come to me to hire, hire us to design and build a website, but I'm already looking at what else do they need and how else could we help them out? I'm also looking at what is their budget, just like the first one of trying to find out about their business and company. I want to see how big their budget is. If they already have a marketing team, whether in-house or external, and if they're pumping 300,000 bot or 300,000, like a lot of money into ads every month. I, I'm saying 300,000 bot because, uh, a, a, a while back we took on a client and the client was spending 300,000 baht. That's 10,000 us dollars. And they're spending that per month on Google ads. 
And they asked us to build a website and they tried to lowball us to a website trying to get us to, to spend like $2,000 for the website. And I'm like, you're spending $10,000 a month on ads. What if we were able to like build a website that could, you know, increase that number right there? Uh, even if it was just by like half the number, if we're only just to increase it, let's just say we just do it by one by uh, uh, we increase the conversion rate by 1%. We would double how many people come to you. You know, how much is that worth? You'd be getting twice as much out of your ads that you're paying $10,000 for. So theoretically, like this website would be worth $10,000 a month. So how does spending $2,000, how can you justify that, that kind of investment? You know, there's a lot on the line right there. And this is how I find out about their budget. Now, I have to tell you, when that project came through, I still didn't have, I still wasn't like, uh, ha I, did still, I still didn't have the experience of speaking to clients like this, to speaking more about the business side. Like, it's taken practice, and it's taken doing a lot of these. And every time I do one of them, I get better with it. And, and you know, in hindsight, I look like I could have easily got a lot more money for that website. Cause we did, we, we boosted their conversion rate by 7% when, when we finished it. They went from having like five to 10 clients in their facility to having 30 to 40 clients within a matter of a couple months. We made them so much money. And I think I only got like $5,000 for the website and they still, you know, they still made it hard for me to get that, you know, but that, that was the experience I had to go through. And now I understand more about the value of what we could do and we want to find out the value that's why learning about the marketing learning about their business we could find out how much we could really do for them all right and then last the last part we talk about the project and when we talk about the project uh we already know about their goals we know about the problems we know about the direction their their customers who are going to be making this for and we're seeing it from a different perspective and now we could look at the project in a different way. We could look at it from an overview and see, see what it really is and what the potential for it is and how we could really help. And then in this part right here, we just wanna get all the information we can. We wanna know the exact scope and wanna find out exactly like what are the actual requirements and to take a list of all that because we're gonna use this now to, uh, for our proposal and to give a quote for the project. And for that, let's go ahead and break it up again and do another Q and A or just like uh, get feedback from others as well. Cause we all got different process. I mean, I'm sure a lot of our processes are the same here. Hey, hey, Jeff, hey. hey what's up, Alex? Um, yeah, I have a question. I just wanted to, to ask you how much, um, do you sort of find out about the client before you make the discovery call? I mean, do you check out, out maybe the LinkedIn, if they've got a website, if they've already got one? Um, you know, when I've gone on discovery calls, I've tried to, definitely if they've got a website, take a look um, and offer them advice, you know, little bits of golden nuggets and free tips for them during the discovery call at the start. I wondered if you had any tips of what you do before. So yeah, I do LinkedIn. I do a thorough background check on them. Like I yeah. try to find out as much information as I can. I look at their website. Uh, I even look for the company on LinkedIn because you can see how many employees and you could also see like who are the directors. You can see everyone's position. So I, I, I go into the call and I'll even write down names of other people in their company. And like, and it'll shock people sometimes when I'm like, well, isn't the so-and-so the director, you know, if you want to get him on the call too, that'd be awesome. And like, it, yep. it, it, you get a good reaction. Like they know you've done your homework when you come in and you do it's something. It's a nice icebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else do anything to prep and to get prepared before uh, going to a call? There are so many questions on the chat, I think. What's that? Oh, the chat? Oh, wow, 22. Yeah, so many questions. <laughs> We're going to get to the chat after. If I start going through it, we won't finish the slide. We only got one more. We're, 
now to the end of the slide. <laughs> All right, you guys okay for me to go ahead and continue? All right, let me go ahead and share the screen again. All right, so this is my process that I use right here. I wanna share it with you. I've been using it lately and it's been really helping out a lot. What I've been doing is, uh, so when I'm writing my notes, I have like uh, my notebook right here. Let me see, and these are actual, let me pull out one of the pages right here. So this is like my actual pages. You see, I have a bunch of notes on one side and then I got these columns broken down. And I have like two sides that I'm writing notes. So on one side is open. I'm just writing constantly because I'm trying to listen. And on the right side, I have these three columns. And I've broken up those three columns. And in the first column, I put my highlight notes, the things that stand out that the, that the client says. Like the client will say something that's like, that's absolutely necessary for their project. They'll say like, we have to have this. And, you know, like, like for an example, they might say, um, uh, uh, you know, we need to have this, you know, the most important thing about our project is that it's designed mobile first and we need this to run in this way. So anything the client says is like super important to them. I'm putting down in the highlight notes. The second column, I have your brand. And here I write down any word that they say that describes them. They use a word like like uh, uh, family oriented or or uh, or high quality or like any of these object uh, adjectives that describes them. I'm writing it down, and this happens throughout the whole call. You know, we could be like when we're of course when we're talking about the brand and the brand questions, I write them in there. But sometimes in the other questions and something else, they'll say something that that describes them. And then I'll write that down as well in the brand. So I have just a list of keywords in the brand. And then uh, the third one, that's where I write my problems. Uh, not my problems. I write the client's problems. Uh, and this is where all the opportunities come in. So every time I hear the client, they message, they mention some kind of problem, a challenge that they're having or anything negative. That's what I write inside there. So I want to get a list of that. And I have to tell you that almost every single time I talk to a client and I ask them what their challenges are, they don't tell me all of them. And it isn't until like we're in another question, it could be some other topic that it'll come out. So it, it goes back to that like psychologist, therapist type of uh, uh, asking questions. I mean, when you just, you know, like just picture somebody like in the movies when they're uh, on the couch and they're asking questions. They're trying to get to the root of the problem and we got to help them get to it. So a lot of these questions is helping the clients get to the root of the problem because most of the times they don't know what it is yet or they might know but not understand the extent of it. So through the whole thing, I am jotting them down. And this is how my columns look right here. Just want to give an example. And it's all about listening. This whole call is all about listening. And throughout the entire meeting, I'm constantly listening for the client's problems. By listening for the client's problems, I'm seeing exactly what we need to solve. I, they could tell me their goals, but everyone's goal is to solve problems. And by solving the problems, we become much more than just a designer and developer. All right, so now we've asked all the questions. We got like about five minutes left uh, for the call. We want to respect the time. If the client says they got an hour, we, we stop within the hour. Uh, definitely want to respect the client's time always. Uh, so when we end it, what I like to do is I like to recap with the client. And what really helps out are those three columns. Those three columns really helps out if you wrote them. And you could go through them in order. And I just started doing this recently and I've been getting really good feedback on it. Uh, one thing you wanna do is you wanna read your bullet points out loud, say, okay, like, just wanna recap on, on uh, how the call was. I felt we got, we made a lot of progress. We got a really good understanding. This is what I heard right here. I heard 
what we need to accomplish and we must is this right here, A, B, and C. And what I heard about you, this is what I, this is, this is what I feel describes your brand the best. And we list those out. And then I list out, I don't tell them the problems. Instead, I look at, and we got some things that we got to overcome. One thing we got to work on is we got to fix this right here. We got to fix this. We got to fix this. And we can probably do these by looking in this area. Now, I don't give them full solutions right off the bat because this isn't a strategy call. This isn't like that right there. And I think uh, Lauren, yeah, Lauren posted it in, in one of the, the in the, uh, in the, on Facebook that when we start getting to that phase, we need to start getting paid for it. So when you start getting to the point where you're giving solutions and you're actually looking for workarounds, that's the point where we got to start getting paid. Uh, because it's our thinking and our creativity and our experience uh, that's valuable right there. Right now, what we want to do is just listen and understand. And now after the recap, uh, we want to qualify the client in order to move forward. And this is a time uh, where we find out the client has a budget for the project and it's time to give them a rough estimate. You know, if you feel like this project is going to start off at 10, 15,000, you know, it might tell the client, okay, let's say I, I think it'll start off at 10, 15,000 and the client is a medium to smaller size client. And I feel like they could afford it because they have a big enough business to afford it. And I feel like they're going to get a lot out of it. I'm going to tell them like something like, you know, uh, uh, just to give you a rough, a rough idea, Think the project like this is going to start off maybe around fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars. I'm going to start high. I'm going to give them a higher number uh, because we want to anchor it up higher. So I'm going to tell them, you know, a project like this is going to start off at about fifteen, twenty thousand. Uh, are you comfortable with this price range? So we want to address this right now. Uh, we want to know their reaction, their response, and what they think about this price and what they're comfortable with, because. I don't want to waste my time going for, I don't want to waste their time, but I definitely don't want to waste my time because the next step will be writing a proposal and actually bidding for the job. And I want to know what are they willing to invest in their project? And I think this whole part right here about talking about how much you're going to invest, I think that that's going to need its own call right there. Cause there's a lot more going into this uh, as far as, talking money with clients right there. But this is where we do address it. But definitely, say you're right here though, just to touch on the surface, and you give a number, a number that you feel is fair for both of you. And if they say like, whoa, that's way too expensive, they're like, okay, well, I mean, what were you looking for? You know, like, I mean, we could scale some things back, but we want to make sure we achieve your goals. You know, you got this going on right here. You got you know, your, your customers, we need to change how they look at you. You could start like looking at the problems, like, you know, what do you, what is this worth right here? You, you see, I mean, this comes with practice, but by you'll have all the ammunition you need and, and you could use that to like discuss the, the project. And if they say, you know, if the client says, you know, uh, yeah, okay. That, that's about the price range that we're looking at. We're okay then you could go ahead and start with the proposal, the next phase. If the client's like, you know, we're only looking to spend like two or $3,000 on this and you know it's a big job, then it might not be the right fit. And why waste your time? You could tell the client, you know, we don't think you could get this job done. You might be able to get a cheap website built. I mean, you could get one built, that's no problem, but we don't think you could solve your uh, problems or, or achieve your goals with that kind of money. And now the call's over and you have just positioned yourself as more than a designer or a developer. You're now acting like and position yourself more as an expert and you show that you have more value than others. And you have everything you need to write a kick-ass proposal. And that's it. Let's go ahead and open it up. And I'll go ahead and open up these, uh, the chat questions too. Does anybody have a question or want to like add anything to this? Come on, Julian, do you have a question, Julian? 
All right, Julian, I saw you ask a question. Uh, I will be sharing this document shortly. So I'll put it out there so you can download this document and use these questions. Uh, one thing though to like keep in mind is some clients will have different questions. You know, sometimes it'd be, some are like questions I ask all clients and they're like in my script that's already pre-made. Uh, some of them might have more specific that I'll add to it. Uh, when I'm doing my research on them and learning more about the client before we go into the meeting. All right, so Narutsu asked a question. Uh, should we prepare something like a situation overview? a niche overview, et cetera, before starting a discovery meeting. And Lauren, I see you have feedback on that. You have the <laughs> answer. <laughs> I was trying to help while you were chatting. Uh, <laughs> I think, it, but at least for me, it depends kind of on everybody else's process and finding what feels good for you and what questions you need personally to, to do the discovery um, what, what research you need? Because I don't do very much research beforehand. Um, I probably should do more, but we just kind of jump on a call and chat through their problems is, is about our discovery sessions. Um, something that I feel like that I just wanted to share too, I have to jump off for another phone call, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to share real fast. Like Jeff was saying with um, strategy, you can actually start charging for it. And something that we try to do is um, kind of try to not cancel, but like the, the client's coming to you with a problem and they've already self-diagnosed what they think the solution is. And the more you can position yourself as an expert of let's check problems first and let's diagnose, diagnose together, um, the more you can charge, like Jeff said, and also like we've done it a couple times where we've actually dissuaded people from building a website. So they were very convinced they wanted a website and we said, okay, let's make sure this is what you need. And we charged them for strategy and we did strategy with them um, earlier on. And it ended up people didn't use their website at all. <laughs> what they needed was social media and they needed um, storytelling on YouTube instead. And so through strategy, we were help, able to help them save money and actually solve their problems in a different way. Um, and I know that's hard when we're all working as designer developers, but you know, if you can help solve people's problems and partner with somebody else or you know, make money different ways, then it help, the client trusts you more and might come back for you later. Most definitely, for Most sure. Definitely. Yeah, right, for sure. I gotta jump off. Thanks, All guys. right, see you, Laura. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like piggyback off of that. Um, for me, it's like I don't like to just build a website to build it. And if I'm doing something that I feel like someone doesn't need, I feel like I'm taking advantage, and that goes against my moral compass. And I, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. Uh, I started actually changing the way I did everything when I first started off and a client told me, like I built a kick-ass client, I mean website, like the website was dope. It was clean. It was one of my really good ones. And then six months later we talked and I asked her, I'm like, so how's everything going? Like, how is the website going? And she just looked at me with disappointment and she said, uh, I never got one person contacting me. And that right there that, that change that, 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 you know, went from being having like pride and like feeling good about building this website to feeling like I just let somebody down and that changed the way that I approach projects. And that's when I got into design. That's, you know, when I started learning more than just how to build a website, but how to help clients out 
and how to look at their goals. Any questions, any feedback or anything before the end of the call? Um, Jeff, I am, I am in line with what you and Lauren both stated just now that uh, you need to identify the needs of the customer because uh, I'm on the same page as you that if you, know, you are just building a website just because someone has an idea in their mind their monkey mind told them that a website can sort the problem for them, but if it is not really the thing which they should be looking for, then I think rather than making your uh, own uh, box, which just for doing the work, if you are not able to gauge importance out of that work, I feel it's always better to let the client be aware that yes, you are aiming this, but I don't think so that could sort out of your goals you are looking for. And if the client still wants, no, I want it, probably we can go ahead. But I think it's always better to be clear and not just look for uh, our, because, you know, sooner or later it can come back to us that, you know, it was not what I was looking for. And then is when our model things come in that, you know, I was aware since first day that this is not going to help, but I just did it just because he wanted. So I feel it's always better and I'm going to apply that. I have never, I have not yet uh, faced this situation. So this is not my experience, but this is my intuition speaking that uh, I feel it's always better to give them a clear picture of whether this website design can help them meet their needs and goals. If it does, perfect. If not, we make them aware. And if they still want to continue, then we can sure go ahead, you know, shouldn't have a problem. But if we can help them in another way, like Lauren stated, social media or strategy building for their business, it's, you know, if we can help with something other than a website and expand and branch out our services, um, that does the job as well. I mean, they get their things and we are able to invest our time to, you know, get the monetary energy back. And that's it. So I really appreciate this idea from you and Lauren and I'm grateful to sharing you know I will apply this in coming times and this is why it's so important to position yourself from the very beginning yeah. as more of a partner than an order taker because if you're an order taker so you're just going to do whatever yeah. they tell you to do but if you position more as a partner you're actually caring then you know it's like okay you got ten thousand dollars to invest I don't want you to invest in something that's not going to help you out you know, if you, you, you might think you need a website, but that money might be better spent, you know, instead of rebuilding your website, it might be better spent on putting it in your SEO. Let's build that one up. Let's build up this, you know, like it might be more. And that's when you're a partner, you would tell this to a partner, you know, you would tell your partner, oh, don't spend your money there, spend it over here. Cause that's going to help you out. And if the client isn't willing to listen from the very beginning, Maybe they don't look at you that way. Maybe they just want an order taker. They may not be the right fit then. It sucks having a client that won't listen to you. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not okay. Yeah, you're paying you. The check is coming in, but like, yes. it's not rewarding. Yes, I, I feel you there. I want to add, uh, I will not take a lot of time because I think this call has been extended longer than we planned generally, you know, but uh, I had this quick experience, um, which is currently ongoing. So I got in uh, contact with a client and uh, she is one of my early first or couple of clients I was working with, you know. So at that time, in your early days, you're not really aware. At that time, you just want to helps people and they help you with money and you give the services. But initially this client was, and I'm sharing this experience because I turn around the situation by my experience. So initially this client was uh, more of an order taker. Um, this client wanted, you know, just do this today or do this tomorrow. Um, the client was disappeared herself for 10 days, not giving uh, really a damn about, you know, some pending work, but then coming back and saying, okay, I want this tomorrow. So for the first 20 days or a month, something I was more of an order taker because I realized she's paying me, she can do that. But what I gained out of it is when I realized that I am not chasing only money in this, I am, you know, 
it's not a favor that the client is doing me by paying money. I am also offering my time and services and I'm investing time and energy and creativity in it. In that return, I am getting money. When I realize that, when anybody who is, you know, in a situation of taking orders, once that person realizes that you are not just being paid for the sake of being paid, you are being paid because you are channelizing and replacing it with your time, energy, your creativity and whatever you bring to the table, that's when you switch out the situation. And now this client of mine is still in contact, but now it's, 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 I will not say it's a complete partnership situation, but now it's no more an order taking situation because I am free to share my thoughts and, you know, I am free to share that, okay, you want the things, but you know, I also have some things going on and you might have to give me some time. And if you really want it right now, it's a two way street. It's not just one way because if you are giving me money, I'm giving you my creativity channelized. So simple. So yeah, this is, I think can help anyone who is in a situation like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's hard to break out of that. It really is. I have clients to this day that I can't break out of it. You know, because most of our clients say they've been with me for years. So they're not with the Jeff from this last year that has built an agency and that helps clients solve their problems. They're with the Jeff that they hired to just build a website, you know? Yeah. And it's really hard to do that. Right now, though, there's a good opportunity to break out of it with the current situation that's going on. Like if anyone hasn't done this yet, uh, take the time to call your clients. Like get on the phone call with them and don't talk about work. Instead, ask them how they're doing, how their families are doing, and how are they coping with you know what's going on and relate to them, you know, outside of work. It's a good way right now to like, you know, to to break out of that that thing. And one thing to keep in mind too, you know, like if you were to hire an electrician because your light bulb isn't working, you're not gonna tell the electrician, I want you to change this wire, this wire, this wire, this wire. You're not gonna tell them that. You're gonna say, fix this light bulb. And the, the electrician is going to know what to do. You leave it up to them, you know? And so why, why should we be different? You know, but yeah. Yes. I, I really appreciate that, you know, we are able to have these calls and share these experiences because if not for these calls, maybe, uh, I don't know about others, but I have been learning a lot since the first call and, you know, applying these strategies and things which are helping me evolve. And now when I speak to my clients in any situation, I can tell them that, as you said, even for your first few clients, you might be the Jeff who built their first size, but sooner or later they have to realize that everybody is growing and evolving with every moment. That was a dream, but right now is what is the truth. So you have to evolve as well. If Jeff is evolving with an agency, the customers got to evolve as well, right? So it's that's right there. Uh, we're all evolving right now. We're all growing. And it's a constant process. Uh, and the reason why I really wanted to have this call is because uh, I'm hoping that others here and others watching this video don't have to wait two or three years to start this. They don't have to wait that long. I want to see other people go faster than me. I want to see them jump ahead of me by talking about this now. And if you're new to having these kind of meetings or to talking to clients this way, uh, it's awesome. This is great. I'm really glad that you're watching this because you could start this right now. I'm not going to get it down the first run. It, it takes practice, but it's the process of when you start. Once you start applying this and start looking at it differently, it's going to open your world. This right here, this initial call, this positioning and looking at it from a different way, it will change everything. It's changed everything for me. It's made me look at things differently. It's made me approach projects differently. And it's made me look at myself differently as well. So I'm really hoping that uh, others could get this out of it. And, uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really grateful to have these calls and, and you know, uh, you guys are helping me. We're all helping each other. You know, I'm still learning. It's funny this morning. I'm, before we get off, I just want to share a quick story. So I had to like, you know, the, this, the first title of this video was how to run an effective discovery. All right. I had to change it to initial 
discovery interview. I had to correct myself because, you know, I'm working with the business coach right now as well. And he checked me. <laughs> he checked me on my discovery process. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> right before I do a discovery call, I have him correct. But I'm glad that he corrected me because then I could correct it. And I definitely want to, you know, uh, I want to teach. I want to be able to give back when I'm learning on it, too. But I'm also in the process of learning, you know, and I'm sure a few months from now, I'm going to be, you know, way ahead of where I am right now. And so are you guys, as long as uh, you're applying this. And it doesn't matter if you're web design, if you're in web development, uh, if you're working in SEO, you're working in digital marketing, you're working in any of these industries as well, that's like parallel to what we're doing right now, uh, the same things can be applied. Uh, the same, like all of it, This just you just gotta turn it around a little bit, make a little bit of tweaks. A lot of this that I learned from is from brand people in branding, uh, from branding experts, branding strategists. That's who I learned most of this from. And I just tweak it and make it fit into uh, my web design business. Cool guys, well I don't want I wanna respect everyone's time, don't wanna keep everyone on. Uh, real quick before we get off, is there any last questions? Oh, just I want to say thank you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Clement. <laughs> It's always good to see you, brother, for sure. All right, guys. So check this out. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I know <laughs> I've been super busy, man, but I am getting the page up there with all the downloads for the PDFs. That is coming soon. I'm going to have last week's call posted up there. I had to free up some time. I got time freed up. So we'll be doing more in the group. Uh, what can help me out from you guys is once you let me know what you would like to learn next, what, what is in the way of your business right now? Like what do you feel could help you right now during this time in your business? Uh, post something in the group, reach out to me. It would be really good for me to hear because I really want to do these, you know, for, for you guys. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds good. All right, cool guys. Okay. Well, Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Everybody. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hey, everyone. Yes. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah. See you. Alex, Julian. Namaste. Jeff, uh, in the end, grateful for the call again today and look forward to see you all guys soon. Thanks. Bye, Clement. I can see you on the Thanks. call yet. Have a good day, brother. <laughs> happy holiday. Happy holiday. <laughs> yes, happy holiday till it last. Enjoy. Yes. Bye bye. Namaste. Namaste. Right. Stay blessed, everyone. Thanks, Ian. It was good to see you again, man. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, good. Good. Just, just to let you know, it's taken me a week to uh, get together my maintenance plans. <laughs> Still going <laughs> from last week's call. <laughs> are you? Are you right now currently putting your plans together? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, uh, I've been doing doing it for about a week or two beforehand. Uh, but yeah, I've got a whole page of notes as to what to include, what not to include. Uh, yeah, so it's almost there. I think I should get it finished today. <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool. I look forward to it, man. If you get stuck on something, ask. You know. That... Yeah, I'll drop you. I'll drop you a DM if I do. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Ian. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Take care. All right, and the more. Are you still awake, man, or did you go back to sleep? <laughs> I am still awake. All right. That's what I love about these group, uh, uh, Zoom calls. You can literally just wake up, turn it on, and just still lay. Yeah, it, it is amazing. <laughs> cool, man, cool. I don't thank you for your calls. Um, I'm learning a lot from you guys. Uh, and I'm not a developer, but I'm learning uh, as an SEO. And we'll try your uh, suggestions, your advice, uh, to uh, uh, with the, with different type of clients. And thank you, thank you so much. Cool, thanks, Omar. It's good to see you, man. And yeah, you, do you know what? Even if you're an SEO, you can still apply uh, these processes and principles, and you can you can still do the same thing, just tweak it around a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Bua and good to see you guys.
And Sean. All right. Cool. Bye.